There is a growing belief among conservative Christians advanced spiritual light can be learned from the Jews. They believe to be holy and acceptable to Yahweh, one must become as Hebrew as possible. This is a deception of Satan intended to divert the attention from the all-important issues at stake in the closing days of Earth's history. Scripture records, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, He that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Based on this and similar texts, many believe if you become as Jewish as possible in life, dress, and practice, they will please Yahweh. Unfortunately, much of what they adopt are the man-made traditions of the Pharisees. With the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the Sadducees disappeared altogether, leaving the regulation of all Jewish affairs in the hands of the Pharisees. Henceforth, Jewish life was regulated by the Pharisees. The whole history of Judaism was reconstructed from the Pharisaic point of view, and a new aspect was given to the Sanhedrin of the past. A new chain of tradition supplanted the older priestly tradition Pharisaism shaped the character of Judaism and the life and thought of the Jew for all the future. Those who turn to Jewish traditions to augment their spiritual lives in actuality are turning to Pharisaism. Jewish scholars admit the fact that modern Judaism is Pharisaism. Pharisaism became Talmudism. But the spirit of the ancient Pharisee survives unaltered. When the Jew studies the Talmud, he is actually repeating the arguments used in the Palestinian academies. The spirit of the Pharisee's doctrine has remained quick and vital. The Savior's most cutting rebukes were directed at the Pharisees. He called them blind guides, fools and hypocrites, serpents, a generation of vipers. Calling out the Pharisees' apostasy, Yahushua likened them to whited sepulchres which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Many sincere Christians today believe the Jews are still Yahweh's special people because the Jews say they are. However, modern Judaism has no more saving merit than its ancient Pharisaic counterpart. Those who look to the Jews for confirmation of light are taking man-made traditions and exalting them to the level of divine commands. Yahushua clearly warned of the end result for all who turn to Pharisaic traditions as truth. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel land and sea to win one proselyte. And when he is one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. 
Modern Judaism, nothing more than ancient Phariseeism, consists of thousands of man-made laws and traditions. Yahweh says he hates these traditions, which obscure the truth and beauty of his commandments, feasts, and Sabbaths. O house of Israel, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them, nor will I regard your fattened peace offerings. You also carry the tabernacle of Moloch and Kion, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Israel's manner of observance had become so corrupted by man-made rules and traditions, even employing pagan practices, they destroyed the spiritual essence of Yahweh's sacred feasts. In their attempt to perfectly keep the divine law, the Pharisees added a host of additional rules and requirements, and taught implementing these would keep one free from sin. In words fraught with significance, Yahushua denounced these added works of the Pharisees, for they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. These sincere people do not know the practices they are adopting are founded upon man-made rules and traditions. They think we're rejecting the bad and going back to the Hebrew roots. But the roots do not extend beyond Babylon. Even in the early days of Christianity, there was a tendency among Jewish believers to place a high value on the beliefs, practices, and traditions of the conservative class known as the Pharisees. To those who were drawn to these human traditions, Paul wrote, For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. Therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. To those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure but even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know Yahweh, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. This is a warning for those who look to the Jews as the repository of divine wisdom. By making Jews the final authority on spiritual matters, believers are led to reject the same truths Jews have rejected. A prime example is the true Sabbath. Under the heavy Roman persecution following the Council of Nicaea, the Jews set aside the biblical Sabbath when Hillel II reformed the original calendar of Yahweh given to Moses at the time of the Passover in Egypt. Today, Jews keep the seventh day of the Gregorian calendar, Saturday, as if it were Yahweh's true Sabbath day. As a result, millions of sincere Christians assume Saturday is the biblical Sabbath for no other reason than it is the day observed by the Jews. 
they believed the Jews would never worship on anything but the true Sabbath. Thus, the truth is rejected because people accept Jews have light, simply because they are Jews. Scripture, however, presents a very different point of view. Not the Jews of ancient times, the Jews of Messiah's time, nor the Jews of today keep correctly the divine law in the manner Yahweh intended. Yahweh testified against Israel and against Judah by all of his prophets. Every seer saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Nevertheless, they would not hear, but stiffened their necks like the necks of their fathers, who did not believe in Yahweh their Elohim. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he had made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he had testified against them, so they left all the commandments of Yahweh, their Elohim, made for themselves a molded image and two calves, made a wooden image and worshiped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Man-made traditions do not purify the soul. They merely serve to allow a people to feel superior to those who hold not unto those same beliefs. The Creator's commands are simple and straightforward. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Man-made rules and earthly traditions overcomplicate the divine law, adding confusion and false self-assurance. Paul feared that new believers would turn to traditions, setting aside the simplicity of truth. But I fear, lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahushua. Yahushua swept aside all the traditions of the Pharisees and clarified the comprehensive yet selfless nature of the divine law. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahushua said to him, You shall love Yahweh your Eloah with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Those who turn to the unbiblical traditions found in Judaism point to all the promises made to Israel, forgetting that promises were always given on condition of Israel's obedience. Israel rejected Yahweh when they demanded a king and Yahweh said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Yahweh bore long with them even after their rejection of him, but divine love will not remain 
where it is not wanted. Though it may linger long, divine love will at last sorrowfully bow to the wishes of the obdurate heart. A few days before Yahushua's death, he mourned with a breaking heart, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more, till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. Paul's warning to Judaizers nearly 2,000 years ago is just as relevant today. Tragically, many Christians who seek to become more Jewish begin to replace their vocabulary or even their names with Hebrew words, often to the point that it is hard for others to understand them or be edified by their testimonies or open prayers. There is nothing inherently wrong with learning Hebrew. To do so can be a great blessing and deepen one's understanding of Scripture. However, it is when a person uses it in a lofty or vain fashion, not honoring Yahweh nor blessing others, then the spirit of Pharisaism comes forth. Many sincere believers today come under the deception of Christian Zionism. An alarming number are being moved to send money to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem not realizing the 70-week prophecy in Daniel 9.24 was fulfilled in the year 34 AD. Choosing to build a new earthly temple for sacrifices and oblations would be an utter abomination against the word of Yahweh El Shaddai, as in doing so engenders falsehood toward this most important of prophecies. The unbiblical traditions of Judaism have no place trying to supplant the divine inspiration of heaven. Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Yahushua saying, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of Yahweh because of your tradition? You have made the commandment of Yahweh of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Modern Jews, as the ancient Pharisees, are not the ultimate authority on that which is pleasing to Yahweh. Most are secular in mindset, and do not rely on the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Yahushua for their own salvation. The promises that were available for the ancient children of Israel are available today to spiritual Israel. For you are all sons of Yahweh through faith in Yahushua the Anointed. For as many of you as were baptized into Yahushua have put on Yahushua. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Yahushua the Anointed. 
And if you are Yahushua's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yahweh invites those laboring under heavy pharisaical burdens to return to him and he will give them peace. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Salvation is an amazing gift of divine grace, won for us by incredible suffering, of which mankind may always only imagine the consequences. The Father Yahweh El Shaddai, for the first time in eternity, separated himself from his only begotten Son, creating consequences we may never truly understand, dealing directly with the deity itself. Those who love their redeemers are inclined to honor them in the beauty of holiness, not obstructed by unbiblical doctrine or dogma. <laughs>